2 Kings chapter 11, verse 4. In the seventh year, Jehoiada, that's the high priest, sent and fetched, fetched the rulers over hundreds with the captains and the guard. That would be like our National Guard. These are the military men. These are the rulers, the elders, everyone in charge. You got a church state here. The church, the religion, the Levites of Jehovah are telling the government what to do. Under God. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. This is not a state religion of man. It's the religion of God. And the government's listening. And brought them to him into the house of the Lord, that be the temple, and made a covenant with them, and took an oath of them, this is the high priest, in the house of the Lord, and showed them the king's son, that's Joash. Now remember, when Athaliah has killed all the royal seed, Jehoshaphat, the daughter, takes Joash, hides him in the bedchamber like Moses, and then turns him over to the high priest in the temple. This young man has been hidden so good, like Moses. I think we're gonna, I think he's seven years old. Yeah, seven years old. Jehoiada brings him out and says, okay, guards, captains, military, here's the king. Here's the son of the king that has not been killed. He's been under my authority. He's been under my teaching like Samuel. Brought to Eli, a very young child. And he commanded them, Jehoiada, saying, This is the thing that ye shall do. Now, the priest of God, the Levite, is telling the government what to do. And if you got a problem with church and state, you got a problem with Old Testament teaching. Because here's God under the authority of the Levites and Levites under the authority of the government. What are you going to do when Jesus Christ sits as king and he is the ruling authority and he will be the church and he will be the government in one? Hit him for six yeah, six years. Seventh year he comes out. Moses was under the care of Pharaoh with his mother teaching him the Hebrew ways. So we see Samuel, we see Moses. He said, this is the thing ye shall do, verse 5, a third part, a third part of you entering in on the Sabbath day, Sabbath, shall even be keepers, that's the first time that word shows up, of the watch of the king's house. All right, where the palace is, where the king's house are, a third of you men right now standing before me, that's your job. This guy needs protection. Why? Look at verse 11, chapter 11, verse 1. Excuse me. When Athaliah, the mother of Azahiah, saw that her son was dead, she arose and destroyed all the seed royal. This high priest, Jehoiada, he's protecting Joash. Because if he were to get into the, into the ways of Athaliah, she kill him. She's already killed all his brothers. Of the watch of the king's house. And a third part shall be at the gate of Shur. And a third part at the gate behind the guard. So shall ye keep the watch of the house. House of the Lord. That it be not broken down. Don't let this woman destroy everything to do with the king. And don't let her destroy everything to do with the house. Which would imply maybe she's doing that right now. The two parts of you, all you that go forth on the Sabbath, even they shall keep the watch of the house of the Lord about the king. So they're keeping the king in the temple. You shall compass, that means encircle the king round about. This would be our secret service. The men and women assigned to protecting the president and his wife and his children and the vice president and his wife and children. Here it is in the Bible. 
every man with his weapons in his hand. And he cometh within the ranges. So when you get a gun and you want to go practice, you go to the range and you use a King James 1611 Bible word. Oh, the Bible is so archaic, or I got my modern Bible. Where are you going, dear? I'm going to the range and shoot. Why are you using the King James word? That means anybody that comes within your aim, as far as your weapon, let him be slain. Kill him. Capital punishment if you come too close to the king. And be with the king as he goes out and as he cometh in. Wherever that king is, you're in charge of him. Your life or his life. And the captains over the hundreds did according to all the things that Jehoiada, the priest, commanded. And they took every man his man that were to come in on the Sabbath, and with them that should go out on the Sabbath, and came to Jehoiada, the priest. Oh, oh, wait a minute. You mean they had people working on the Sabbath that they kept on nailing Jesus on? Oh, you, you rubbed uh, uh, wheat in your hands on the Sabbath. Bad, 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 bad. You healed a man on the Sabbath. Oh, bad. There were military personnel working on the Sabbath. You know, as they were following and rebuking Jesus for the Sabbath, they were doing things on the Sabbath. Would it be right to blasphemy? Would it be right to interrupt someone teaching the Word of God on the Sabbath? And to the captains over hundreds, did the priests give King David spears and shields? Ooh, look at that. Let's break out the old artillery. Let's have David a part of this king, Joash. He may be dead in his, in his scepter, but let's bring out his weapons. That were in the temple of the Lord. You know, the sword of Goliath that David took was at the temple of the Lord too, the tabernacle. And the guards and the guards stood, every man with his weapon in his hand, round about the king. Now they need a weapon. Because there's a woman out to kill all the family of the king. There is no one to be on that throne but her. There is a physical threat. From the right corner of the temple to the left corner of the temple, along by the altar, that would be the brazen altar, at the temple. And he brought forth the king's son, Joash, and put the crown upon him, and gave him the testimony. That would be the word of God, that he's to write. But it doesn't ever say he wrote it, but there it is. Deuteronomy 17, verses 18 to 20. And they made him king and anointed him with olive oil upon his head. And they clapped, that's the first time that word shows up, their hands and applauded. And said, God saved the king. We don't have no king in, in America. We defied the kingdom and kingly and queen and all that. We have a president. President is found in the book of Daniel. There was one good president, Daniel, and the rest of them were wicked. But we're a Christian nation. God saved the king. That's what England says. Well, they don't say it now. They say God saved the queen. But when they got a king or a queen, God saved. Comes out of the King James Bible. Amazing how much comes out of the Bible. And when Athaliah heard the noise of the guard and the people, they're applauding, they're happy, they're clapping, they're celebrating. That make her mad. She's an evil, wicked woman. She came to the people and to the temple of the Lord. So here's the temple. Here is the king. Here is the high priest and the priest and the and the armies. There's a great celebration at the temple. We have a king. And when she looked, behold, the king stood by a pillar. Now I've got to wonder, is that the pillar of Boaz or Jacob? There were two important pillars that Solomon made. 
that he named. It doesn't give a name. It says a pillar. But there were two specific pillars. It's not named here. As the manner was, and the princes and the trumpeters, see, there's the ruckus, they're all clapping their hands and they're blowing the trumpets by the king. All the commotion is about the king. And all the people of the land, Jewish, rejoice. That's what she heard. And blew with trumpets. That's what she heard. And Athaliah rent her clothes, filthy woman, and cried, treason, treason. How about murderer, murderer? Why is she crying treason? That boy that is there, eight years old, seven, eight years old, that throne is rightfully his. It doesn't belong to her. She's a liar. Treason, treason, that's a lie. Lady, murder, murder, wickedness. How about you? How about you? And Jehoiada, the church, the gathering group of the Jews, with the leader of the high priest, the priest commanded the captains of the hundreds. Here is the priest ordering the military. You got a thing like that today with the Catholic Church, but that's not biblical today. We are not after a kingdom. We're not after a piece of land as the Catholic Church is. Our mission today is take the gospel and preach the gospel to lost people. And there to get saved, we're to bring them up from baby to uh, the elderly. We're to bring them up from milk to bread to steak to meat. We're not ever called as Bible-believing Christians to take over nothing. Now, Romans 13, the government says, go and fight. We obey the government. But we're not to cause a war. And no Bible-believing Christians ever started a war. That's religion. And that's religion going all the way back into 2 Kings, 1 Kings, Samuel, Chronicles. And then you have the, the nerve to say, oh, we base our church upon the apostles and Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. There's still 850 years yet to Jesus being born. And we see religion working out as it does. Whether it be Catholic, whether it be the Mormons out battling and fighting, whether it be Russia and their state church. Yeah, there's a thing against the church and state when the church is against the God of the Bible. But where we're reading right now, this is Jehovah. Offers to the host and said unto them, Have her forth without the ranges. Get her out of here. And him that follows her kill with a sword, ordering this woman dead. For the priest had said, let her not be slain in the house of the Lord. This is not the place to kill her. Remove her. And they laid hands on her. And she went by the way, went by the way, by which the horses came into the king's house. If you don't see the second advent passage right there of Jesus Christ mounting on that white horse, Revelation 19 and coming. Leaving heaven on the white horse with us behind behind him coming up picking up the jews at sail feature probably coming up the king's highway coming through the jordan river and coming straight into jerusalem and establishing his throne there it is overthrowing and killing with a sword we're going to see it with a sword kill with a sword the sword that comes out of his mouth that's the second advent by the which the horse came in into the king's house there was she slain. The wicked's gone. They got rid of the wicked. Now the revival starts. We want a revival in America. You got to get rid of the wicked. You're not going to have a revival with the sinners and wickedness upon the country and the leaders of this country. You're not going to have a revival with the wickedness that are in the churches today. In the name of Jesus Christ of cross. You're not going to have revival when sin is rampant and going full force. And Jehoiada, Jehoiada, the high priest, made a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people. 
the man of religion, the right man of God said, between that king and us, we're going to stand before God. And that they should be the Lord's people. They are the Lord's people. But they sure haven't been acting like it. They have sure not been doing what God is. Listen, we're going to see in a moment something has happened that happened up north. Wickedness. Between the king, also in the people. Here's the priest of God ordering the people and the king what to do. You're not going to have revival in America today. When you get a Bible-believing Christian that gets up and preaches the word of God, and the church hates him, and the Christians hate him, and they don't want to listen to the Bible, don't expect a revival. And all the people of the land, that would be Palestine, that's the promised land, went into the house of Baal. This is Jerusalem. This is Judah. This is South. And they got the house of Baal. Uh, Azariah, remember he married into Ahab. He married into Jezebel. He brought down from the north the house of Baal. He had a church plant of the house of Baal. There was a house of Baal in Israel. And there's a house of Baal in Jerusalem where God's name ought to be. Where God said, where I will put my name among the children of Israel, right there also was the house of Baal. And break it down. I don't know if you're going to have revival in America when religions are on the rampant and religions are allowed in the public school system, but the Bible's not. Oh, what about churches? They got modern Bibles. They got Christmas trees. They've got all kinds of worldly puke. They're lukewarm. God said <laughs> to the lads of seen church age. We are all kinds of rich. We have no need of nothing. That's not the attitude getting right. This Jehoiada has seen that that church of Baal. I don't know how often when he goes to the temple, he may, I don't know where it is, but he, he knows that church is there in Jerusalem, and it makes him sick. He has finally set a man of God on the throne, and with that, let's get rid of that junk. And things are going to happen. Break it down, his altars. So Baal has altars, remember. We've got a church, okay? you got a church. We've got altars. His images break they in pieces. Thoroughly. <laughs> they made sure that these pictures ain't coming back. And slew Matin, the priest of Baal, before the altar. So he's got priests. Baal has priests. Baal has altars. He has images. It's almost kind of hard to tell which church is which church. Except you got the Bible. And the priests appointed officers over the house of the Lord. So what Jehu done in chapter 10, verses 27 and 28, Jehoiada is doing in chapter 11, verses 18, in Jerusalem. Baal is getting his butt kicked out. Baal has settled himself. You know what Jesus Christ is going to come to do in the millennium? He's going to kick Baal out. He's going to come and kick the meteor Mary out. He's going to kick the Jesus Christ of North America out. He's going to kick the butts of Jehovah Witnesses out. He's going to get rid of the Church of Christ. Now, there are people in those churches, in those assemblies, they're, if they're saved, they're, they're just as saved as I am. I am talking about the religious system of them churches. The churches that say it's okay to be a sodomite. We welcome all. God's going to kick them out. And those churches are far and away. One of the things you can see about bad churches today is read that billboard. I call it billboard now. Read that billboard that's outside their church. And look at the nonsense they put on those things. 
We're going to have Usher's Week. We're going to have Women's Week. What about God Week? What about Jesus Week? All are welcome. Really? Really? I bet you don't preach about sin if they're all welcome. And he took the rulers over hundreds, and the captains, and the guard, and all the people of the land. And they brought down the king from the house of the Lord, the temple, and came by the way, the gate of the guard to the king's house. This is going to be Jesus Christ just before the millennium, at the second advent, and at the start of the millennium, they're going to bring King Jesus. And they're going to cry out again, Hosanna. They're not going to cry out, crucify him. They're going to say, Hosanna, God in the highest. He is here. He's our king forever. And he sat on the throne of the kings. Jesus Christ is going to sit on the throne of David, Luke chapter 2. This is second advent. It's going to happen again. And all the people of the land rejoice. They're going to rejoice at Jesus. Like they did when he came in upon the uh, ass, the cult of the foe. They rejoiced. But he didn't conquer no nations yet. He came as the conqueror of sin and death. But when he comes back the second time, the conqueror of sinners. And the city was in quiet, peace, rest. A thousand year reign of peace. Jerusalem means the city of peace. Salam, peace. Jeru, city. You learned some Hebrew today. And they slew Athaliah with the sword. That sword. We'll read that in a moment. Besides the king's house. Seven years old. Seven in the Bible's complete. Seven years of tribulation period. Seven years Joash has been in that temple. He has not been king. Seven years of Jacob's trouble. Seven years of tribulation. And then, now, here comes Jesus Christ. Look at that. You could not pick a better age. You could not pick a time and read about Jesus Christ. Where the horses have come when he began to reign. Let's look at Revelation 19 as we close. Let's look at what we just read in Jesus Christ coming. I ought to get excited. Because if I read my Bible correct as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, I am going to be part of Jesus coming into Jerusalem again. You want to go to Holy Land? I will one day. And Jesus Christ will make it holy. Right now it's unholy. Chapter 19, verse 11, Revelation. I saw heaven open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. And in righteousness he does judge. He's going to judge Athaliah. And make war. There's going to be a war before the millennium peace. His eyes were as a flame of fire. He's angry. And his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Nobody's going to know the name of Jesus Christ when he comes back. That's how well Satan's going to do his job. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. We saw that with Jezebel. And his name is called the Word of God. Quite interesting. And the armies which were in heaven, I have another, we're going to read another verse the Lord just laid on my heart. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, that's us, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. That's what we just read tonight, that sword that killed Athaliah. And with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, Jesus Christ, the religious, Jesus Christ, the kingdom, the church and state. And he traded the winepress and the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. And he, on his vester, he had on his vester and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings, not President of Presidents, and Lord of Lords. And I have one more place here I have to find, Revelation 2. Revelation 2. Athaliah was the daughter. Revelation 2. 
and uh, we'll pick up 20. Now watch this. Lord just laid this on my heart. Scripture with scripture. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel. We know who Jezebel is. She's dead now. She's dog poop. She was wicked. She brought Baal to north, which called herself a prophetess to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. There's Baal. Baal hasn't died yet. I gave her a space to repent of her fornication. She repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Oh, that's a big word. Except they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children. Isn't that what Athaliah did? Be not deceived. God's not mocked, Jezebel, Athaliah. Did not Jezebel kill the prophets? Watch. With death. And all the churches shall know. That I am he which searches the reins of the hearts. I will give unto every one that. Uh, I will give unto every one according to your works. That's kind of funny. Now, how uh -huh, funny. I will kill her children. Athaliah was her children. Athaliah and Jezebel killed people of God. God says, okay, fine. Wait to the seeds you two planted. Wait till I start. Wait till I put that sickle into the field. And then Jesus Christ comes back. Woe unto religions. 